So what you get is, first of all, all you need is a browser and then a connection to the internet, nothing else. There's no software to download, nothing to store. It all gets done for you up in the cloud. Yeah. So yeah. when you log in, it always starts up with your local parish. So in my case, it's going to start off with my local parish here in Somerset. And yeah. what you get on the right hand side is the uh, Ordnance Survey's high definition map of the UK. Yeah. That covers the entire UK. So although it starts you in your parish, you can in fact go anywhere. Okay. Which is fun. And yeah. it starts off with the parish boundaries online, which they really irritate me. So I use them as an example of how to turn layers on and off. So you've okay. got the ordinary ordnance survey map, and then on top of it, you've got a layer of uh, parish boundaries, and you yeah. turn layers on and off uh, by literally just clicking in them. So they're all going to disappear now. Yeah. And then, are you familiar with digital maps? You use Google Maps or something like that? Yeah, yeah, I've seen things. So, like you know, you yeah. zoom in and the detail increases and you get more and more detail and you can see everything down to the last square centimeter. Yeah. Uh, detail for zooming out, you get the whole country. Um, and that's just sort of Somerset. And so you don't need me to show you that. Uh, and then the ability to pull layers in and out is what makes sorry, it's looking for my list of things to show you. Um, is what makes it more interesting. So uh, we'll go out one more level. As it happens, the area of Somerset that we're in is an area that floods quite easily whenever it rains. Right. That's useful for parish councils for when they're looking at planning applications and so forth. So you can go up and say, out of all these hundreds and hundreds of layers of information here. You yeah. want the ones that are associated with floods. So you do a quick search for flood and it comes down from hundreds to three uh, okay. and these are each a collection. So there are underlying layers under each of these. So if I go to this one, just click on the little down arrow and say, let's just show what happens if it rains in zone three. Yeah. And it thinks away to itself and then suddenly you discover that half the county disappears underwater. <laughs> right. and, and you can do the same with all sorts of layers so literally hundreds of layers here but you get useful information such as the address of every building in the country right. uh, all the grade two listed buildings near you all the conservation areas all the sites of special scientific interest uh, all the details of the land registry titles that sort of thing you get the land registry title numbers on there i do i do i can even show it to you so if I go down to, let me turn off the parish boundaries because they're a pain, and then we go mm. to the land registry. Yeah. Turn on the parcels. You need to be zoomed in a bit further than this. This is too far. Oh, let me turn off the flooding. That's awful. Sorry. <laughs> Get rid of the flooding, otherwise we'll never see anything. There we go. Come back up to the land registry, come in to zoom in a bit to get the space. And then make sure I just lift it. I did lift it. Now, do you see them all? Oh, that's what you good. get with every land parcel is a reference number, and you can go to their the land registry website and just type in that number and up pops all the details um, for the, the paying of a small fee. Yeah. <laughs> so so are, they, are they the title numbers then that you, you the same title numbers the land registry would use? No, sorry. Okay. It's a shame, but it isn't. But this is what they call, um, oh, it's, it's, so when you go to their website, there's a special search down in the bottom left corner. And, and yeah. that's, that's these numbers. It's only that the, they change the reference numbers. So when you look at your um, planning applications and people are showing the land registry title, that's a different code number. It's okay. really irritating. It'd be very nice, wouldn't it, if they had the same number? Yeah, it would. It would. They don't. They don't. So... Basically, you've got the right-hand map is the digital map. The left-hand column here changes as we do things, but at the moment, it's showing all the layers that you can do. They're all divided up into collections. So the green ones are all to do with the base map. The brown ones are all collections from all sorts of places, including you're in Sussex? Yeah, Suffolk. I'm sorry, Suffolk. So I'm not quite sure how good Suffolk is at exporting data, but in our case, the county council, soon to be a unitary, uh, yeah. and the district council both, both share layers of information from their geographical information systems, 
which is wonderful because it means we get all the things like the oh, the classic one is the footpaths. So if I turn on the footpaths, you can see them here. If you zoom oh. in a bit, you start getting all the identification numbers. So you lose the same number that everyone else uses. Yeah. Uh, saves you an awful lot of time and trouble if someone else has already drawn it. Yeah, definitely. For all the footpaths around you. So that's the, the sort of the basic principles of the system. I'm just going to sort of tidy it up so that we can go back to where we want to be. Let me come down and turn off the land registry, didn't I? Yes, so good. So that's, uh, and then you can zoom in, zoom out as normal. Uh, and just to show you that there is a very comprehensive help system. So up in this top right corner is a cogwheel. If you click on that and go into help and support, that takes you to a brand new facility for uh, Parish Online, which is the support center. And okay. in the knowledge base, you just type in whatever you want to know. So if you're interested in say the PGSA license, you just type in PGSA and it tells yeah. you how to get it, how to apply it and everything else. And they have a lot of videos, which are very good for sort of showing you how to do things. So help and support is a piece of cake. Um, <clears throat> And then the, the second thing that is, so if, if you're a, a parish council, often the, the first reason people buy parish online or get hold of it is because they want to do a neighborhood plan. And, and all the maps that you need are in here, or right. you can create them. The second thing is an asset register, which is what we have here on the left. And basically that's a list of all the assets that a parish owns. Um, and they give you the infrastructure to add the data. So it's just a matter of putting the data in. Okay. Uh, and you can store everything you've got. So if I turn on ours, just so for buildings, say, and you see these little icons pop up here. Yeah, yeah. Uh, and then this is what's known as location-based data, Lydia. So you click right. on anything in Parish Online and, and it, the left-hand line now changes to a column of data for this particular record. So okay. it shows you where it is, it shows you what it is, it tells you how much money it's worth. We have to insure it for nearly 15,000 quid. And then you think, what on earth are you insuring for 15,000 pounds? And you can take a little look at the picture of it. And if I go into here and say, I want to see that picture. And then we'll just put it into downloads and say, download it. And we'll replace it. And if I get there, sorry, we, uh, there we go. Downloads. The pump house. And there's the picture of it. And all it is, oh. the old village pump, and someone's put a stone building around it. Fine. The reasons which completely escaped me, <laughs> it's going to cost 15,000 pounds to replace it if it gets knocked down by some runaway bus. Right. Um, but anyway, the point is, is that you can take any record within Parish Online and add any sort of data to it. So here I've attached photographs, but it can be spreadsheets, it can be documents, it can be uh, games, anything you like that you think is appropriate for your particular piece of uh, land, uh, you can put in here. So this is invaluable from a insurance point of view you know and every three years you have to renew your insurance and it's such a, a desire a joy to click on here do one click and the whole lot prints out and you can send it off to yeah. the insurance company saying this is what you're insuring for us are yeah. you are you in agreement and then you, you know you get all the sums of money and you're demonstrating that you've done inspections and that you've uh, checked whatever you're supposed to be checking and it gives you a track record of due diligence if you will so that's that particular one, or you can use it for all sorts of other things. I mean, for instance, in the building contents, let me turn off the buildings, the building contents, uh, we've got uh, a defibrillator. Well, in that, well, in that particular case is a solar panel, but you know, we've recorded it, we've got a value for it, it's going to be 25,000 pounds to replace it, so you're all done. And then again, we can add pictures of the attachments, of how you take meter readings, all that stuff. So this map is only viewable to your users who have got the user uh, sort of information, is it? 
Graham? Is With respect okay? to your information, yes. So you can go ahead and add information for anywhere in the country, and the only place it's going to see it is you. And of course, it doesn't have any value unless it's for your particular parish council. Yeah. Yes. So our residents couldn't see this. They can't see it unless you give them access. And there okay. are all sorts of ways of doing that, which I'll cover shortly. But um, okay. yes, you're, you're safe in writing rude remarks, if you like. <laughs> <laughs> well, people do, don't they? <laughs> um, now one of the reasons, the things that we use it for, for instance, I'm just going to use the big bookmark system here. If I go to the operations manual, it clicks onto our village hall. And what we do is store all the useful data here that people need to know about. So the first thing people need to know about in the village hall is the um, is the uh, uh, Wi-Fi password. So if I click on the Wi-Fi password, up it pops. And now I've got it. Oh, that's handy. With yeah. everything for the manual. So the whole place. So how do we use the stage lighting? How do we use the sound, the sound system? Um, yeah. Anything like that. So, and there's even a little note here to say we're going to mark out the, the car park um, with paint so that the mums who drop their children off to school manage to park in an orderly fashion. <laughs> enough, that request was made by a mum who got so fed up with her being unable to park anywhere because all of her colleagues were yeah. <laughs> parking very badly. Yeah, I can but understand. We've asked for it to be done, but it hasn't happened yet. But just an idea you can use the system for logging and keeping track of all sorts of data. And it's very useful to publish this to your uh, village users. Um, and this sort of information you can quite cheerfully make public to them. Yeah. Um, so this is in what's known as a parish layer. Yep. So this is all the stuff that you want to create for yourself. So you get the opportunity to um, do anything you like that people tend to, to need. So we do planning applications. We do when's the village shop open. The one I often demonstrate to people is the tree charter. So if I... Yep. Um, if I, I again, it's going to be faster to go as a bookmark to that. But if I go as a bookmark to the tree charter, I just there it is. And what we've done here is created a a gap or, or an area where we planted the fifty trees that were given to us by the tree charter. Who said, you know, one of the conditions of us giving this these to you is you keep track of them. Right. So how do you keep track of 50 trees? Well, when they arrive, they all arrive in sort of little seedlings. So we clicked on here. This now tells you who owns the, the area, where it is, when we got the trees. Uh, and then we got pictures of what they looked like. So you can click on any one of these and it shows you, uh, you know, here's a little sapling in a polythene tube to protect it with a wooden mm -hmm. stick to hold it up. And if you look around, there are 50 of them. Um, and then as they grow, they obviously can't all stay here. So we then take them out, transplant them, put them somewhere else, take a photograph and show basically a record over time of how things have developed. Yeah, good. Um, and as you can see, it's pretty wet and muddy here, which is why we're usually underwater. Yeah. <laughs> uh, so that's a, a classic use of the system. Uh, I'm just going to look at my notes and show you what else we can do. Oh, yes. Well, Another one that we've done is, I think, in the, I don't know if I've done it here or if I've done it in the, I think I've done it in the, yes, in the asset register. So one of the things that we've got, like many other people, is a playground, which is here. And if I go there, it's going to be this little scroll back a bit to the left of it. Bit more to the left. There we go. So Graham, do you work for Parish Online? No. No, I have You're not, just a nothing. user that does these presentations, are you? Is it what, sorry? Are you, you're just a user who likes Parish Online and is happy to promote it for other people. Is that is that what Oh, well that's that's in my role as the user group, which I set up when I first got involved with these people. And then right. um, as I got to know the system and I got to know the people at Parish Online, they agreed that I could take over the training of people. So I run all yeah. the training sessions as my own yeah. company. Great. Um, and that's that's I find that very entertaining. In fact, it's now become you know my hundred percent occupation. All right. So what I wanted to show here was our recreation ground. We've added 
um, the bits that sort of apply to us. Here's the children's playground. And the sorts of things you can use this for, I mean, so people are always asking the insurance company saying, so how big is it? Well, you can say, let's just zoom in one little bit further. Let's turn on tools and measure. And then we say, we want the length. So I'm gonna start here, go down to there, go down to there, go up to there and, and go there. And now I know it's 20, 26 meet rods. How incredible, who wants a rod? That's really awkward. Let's go for meters. So it's 133 meters to walk around it. Or I can say, I want the area. And now it's 133, sorry, let's try the area. That's um, a handy tool, isn't it? It's a really handy tool. So um, there, and there's, the, let's just say the area, and the area is 965 square yards. Yeah. Then you can go a bit further and you say, so what equipment do you have there? And so you can say playground equipment. Let's see what I've got for playground equipment. I think I've got that in the asset register as well. No. Okay, I thought I had playground as a separate thing. That's the problem with this. You get so stuck and forgotten what you've done. I was going to say, there's a lot of data in there, isn't there? There we go. Children's playground equipment. So here I've now added a dot. and Every dot represents a piece of equipment. So to see what it is, you just click on it. And there it is. And you know, here are all the photographs of it. So we can show you one of those. And that's that particular swing. And this is the whole of that recreation ground that you saw on the map. Oh, yeah. Um, and a sign again for the insurance company saying we shut down the swing because it needs some repair work. Yeah. You can yeah. see the cracks in the, the uh, rubber underlay here. Um, so this is all sort of showing due diligence to people when they need to know that the parish council is doing what it's supposed to be doing. Yeah, yeah. Um, and I, I find it hugely convenient um, to store information. And I find that I keep coming back here when, it, you know, I know the answers are available elsewhere, but because I know my way around here, this is where I'm doing it. So um, we've done the layers, we've done the tree charter, we've done the village shop, the operations manual. Um, we could show you planning applications so you can see here i've got all the planning applications if you turn on them and let's yep. just turn off the, the kids playground we don't want that one and we don't want the playground so these are what you manually add are they every time the planning application come in you manually add it on your map uh, that depends on how well behaved your local planning authority is <laughs> if they okay. export the data it'll come straight into parish online Okay. In our case, South Somerset District Council is about to do that, but they haven't actually done it yet. So until they do it, I add them in myself. Yeah. And all we do is uh, put them in as a sort of a color coding. And if they're purple, they haven't been approved yet. Um, if they're green, I'm going to add in last year's as well, because it gets a bit more data, data in there, it hasn't been much happening. So red ones have been refused, green ones have been uh, accepted, and purple ones haven't been accepted. Same rules, if you click on any one of these things, the left-hand column changes to data. So this gives us, when we made our decision, we objected back in uh, May of last year. Mm -hmm. Too big, too high, too noisy, and not in keeping with the rest of the village. So that's pretty strong stuff. But the really useful thing, I think, is, well, first one is you've got the link here to the local planning authority. So if I just click on that link here, uh, it opens up in, and the, with the local authority. You've probably recognized this. Yours are looking something like this. And there, they've got every single document associated with the record. So you can give all of your, your uh, villagers access to this. And they, all they need to know is to look on the map. So they look on the map, they look for the house they're worried about, and it gives them all the details. And then- How do they get to the map then, Graham? How do they get well, to this? <laughs> how you're writing, you're re reading my script for me, Lydia. Ah. <laughs> so, there, is, there are several ways of doing this, of, of getting the information out. And the one I really like, which is what I'll show you now, yeah. is called public map. Right. Uh, you produce the public map uh, for use on your village website. Yeah. So what we've done here is we've thrown in um, the overhead photography as well. So it's less, it takes a little while for the data to catch up because it's all coming down from the cloud. So just bear with me. There it goes. 
And then this is the way that the public could see it, either on your village website or just as a standard URL, which you send oh, out. Okay. Yeah. And what happens is, is that they can scroll around as if they're inside Parish Online. So you say, so I really want to see what these are. I'm scrolling in now. This is the one I'm interested in. So let's just get a bit more close to it. And you can see that it was approved because it's green. If I click on it, then the data comes up again. But this wow. is what your local parish uh, villagers can see. And they, they get the link to the, uh, the same website from the local planning authority. They can see what the decisions and when the dates were and what the parish council decided. So our contribution to this decision um, is all recorded. Um, and what I really like about public map and the bit I really wanted to make clear to you is that if we now go in and we change anything inside Parish Online, it automatically updates the public map. So you don't need to make changes more than once. You just make them inside Parish Online and the villagers will all see the changes as you do them, which I think is so, a huge time saver. Is it difficult getting that onto your village website? Yeah, it's at least four clicks. <laughs> so they, they, the system does all the work for you. It produces the coding that you need to just uh, put into your website. It's a piece right. of it. It's wonderful. Okay. okay and it's that um... way your users have freedom to roll around just the way that you do. So if they're not interested in 2021, they want to know what happened in 2019, you turn on 2019 and they pub jump up instead. Or you can have them all on if you like, but it gets a bit complicated then. So you choose which maps the users can see. They can't see the one, for example, with the um, land registry sort of boundaries of property. <laughs> exactly. It's entirely your choice. Okay. Um, and the beauty of it is, is that once you've done that once, then it's it's there forever and it updates forever. And, yeah. Um, and in the same token, the other thing that I should show you, because it's, it's pertinent to your question of how do you show people. So let's go back to this. Here's the scene of the... Uh, what's being worked on at the moment. So you can say, I want to print that. So we go up to print and it gives you a square of what you're gonna have inside the printout. And right. you can move this around. You say, that's not what I want. I want a bit more down here. And then, yes, that's much more like it. So you then say, do I want a title? And this is uh, planning apps and uh, whatever else you want. And do I want it as a PDF or a graphics file? Do I want the legend of what the colors mean? Yes, please. Do I want a north arrow? Yes, please. Go ahead and print it. And it swirls around to itself whilst it's thinking. And then it says, here I am. And what you get is this. Brilliant. Oh, so this is, is it's really neat. It's got the mm. legend on it. it, tells you what everything is. And then you can just either save this as a PDF file and email it to everybody. Or if your village is still working in the 18th century, you can actually print it out on a piece of paper. Yeah, Stick it up on the village it. notice board. Um, so all these options open to you. I think it's a pretty magical system in case you hadn't noticed. <laughs> <laughs> well, I say that because I spent 35 years in IT and right. saw lots and lots and lots of software applications in that time. And this is still, in my opinion, just about the sweetest one going. I think it's really powerful. It's really inexpensive. It's very capable of, of helping very busy parish clerks get things done because it takes a little bit of time to get it set up. But once you've done it, you can just fly through your daily work. So, and to help you there, um, let me just show you in Parish Online's own website, which is there, they have a tab called case studies. Yeah. And under here, they have examples of all the things that councils all over the country have done. So yeah. if you find something that says that's what we want to do, you can click on here. And it comes up with a document that tells you exactly how they did it. So it tells you, gives you all the stages that they went through, how they got there uh, and what the outcome was. Really useful stuff. So it's, it's basically someone has probably done it before you and they've done a case study to show you how you can do it too. Oh, uh, I think it's a great, a big help. It's very reassuring to know that you're not trying something that nobody else has ever done before. Yeah, and um, you can see what the finished product would look like as well. I missed that, sorry. 
you can see what the finished products would look like. Oh, absolutely. Yes, that's that's as you're trying to persuade your doubting fellow councillors, then exactly it helps to have the chance to show them uh, what's been done elsewhere. And there's about 1800 councils across the country using this system. So it's not uh, as if you're making a rare decision. Yeah. Um, so just an example of some of the other things. Let me turn off these layers because they get in the way. And there was one other one down here. There's Brandy Parish boundaries. Are you into climate change, your people at all? One of our councils is, yes. Okay, so let me just show you this because it's, it's of interest. If you come out to where you can see the parish boundary, just click anywhere on any of the boundaries and go up to your particular boundary and click here. And what you get is a CO2 calculator. So you, mm, if it's wow. really interesting, you can break down how your village is using um, the local facilities of you know, travel, housing, consumption, and so forth to produce CO2 on a per household basis. Or I have no idea can... how they can know that though, Graham. How can they get those statistics of food and diet, for example? It's, it's quite clever. What they do is they say, we know what the CO2 contribution of the whole of the UK is. All sorts of people have measured that. So then you say, well, let's divide that by the number of houses. So that gives you an approximate number per house. And then you say, let's look at the geography. If the house is near a main road, raise it up a bit. If it's out deep in the country, take it down a bit because there's, um, you're not getting all that CO2 from the motorway. If you're, um, you have everything that has to be delivered by van or something, then your consumption of CO2 goes up because there's a white van man dashing around. Whereas if you're in the city, that doesn't happen. And so that's where all this lot comes from. Um, <clears throat> and, you know, they say that uh, they're wrong here. They say there's a waste management place um, in our area, which we uh, have to pay for as a penalty, you know, in terms of CO2, because it's generating CO2. Uh, there's actually an anomaly there because we don't. So right. what you can do, which is fun, and I just mentioned this for you to chat with your, your colleague, you can do a comparison. So if I say, uh, here's us in Long Sutton, and if I take the village next door to us, which is called Hewish, this could be, well, if I could spell it, we'd find it. There we go. So they're quite different. Now they're only three miles away, but they're generating five tons a year per household less. And you think, well, that's not, it's never heard such rubbish in my life. But it gives you a starting point to talk, to talk about and to start debating. And then the other things that you can do in Parish Online, again, this is for your uh, colleague. If I come back to here, um, we can turn off this one and go down to climate and energy. I just saw that somewhere. Where do I see that? There we go. So what you can do here is check all of the houses in your area with EPC certificates. Right. So they, you can see they've all popped up on the screen. And then they also generate, so, so which ones are the most easy ones for us to convert to level C? So these will be all the ones that are C or lower. Mm -hmm. We'll show you all the ones circled in, in oh sorry, circled, um, in, surrounded in blue are the ones that it's easy to get them from their currents of D or E or whatever it is up to C uh, because the system has taken a note of uh, you know, insulation levels and that sort of thing. Um, yeah. It's all a bit spooky because it's big brotherish, isn't it? It really is. Yes. <laughs> On the other hand, if you're a council and you say, we need to improve our CO2 figure, what are we going to do for climate change? And quite a lot of councils around the country have declared a climate emergency. So then you say, mm -hmm. so what are you going to do about it? Well, one of the first things you can do is say, look, why don't we put some funds towards bringing those houses which are most easily raised to level C up to level C? You know, we'll, we'll, they're obviously going to be people who couldn't have afforded to have done it or haven't been educated yet enough to do it. But let's get them up to level C. So you can start creating your local policy depending upon um, this sort of information. And there's tons yeah. more information like it. And I'm just doing this one as an example, but really fascinating stuff and really increasing the amount of use, I think, that Parish Online is to its users. 
So, oh, I had no idea about those EPC certificates and things. That's really useful. Isn't that clever? Well, the Ooh. other one I like, I think I mentioned to you in passing, was the addresses. But really convenient to have the address of every house. And you just click on any dot and it'll tell you what it is. You know, and it, it gives you the public information. So you get the uh, uh, area, you get the postal code, nothing private. So you don't know who's there and you don't know what, yeah. their, phone, and they don't know what their phone number is because that's all yeah. that's privacy. But public information is readily available. And the most useful one to a parish council can be the uh, unique property reference number here, this one, UPRA. Yeah. Because again, and is that the one that you type into the land registry? Is it absolutely? You can, number? yes, you can do, yes. Okay, uh, so again, handy stuff. The one that fascinated me, turn off the addresses, but the one that really I thought was extraordinary was uh, where are we? Historic England. So turn on the listed buildings around you, and I had no idea that we were so famous. Look at this. Every one of these is in some way uh, important and oh. it tells you, tells you what it is. So we're looking at a pair of gates or the piers for the gates. Um, and then it gives you a link to the more detail. So you can click on here and this is exactly what they have in the information. It's really, no, you can get lost already, in- It's already there. You don't have to add any of that on, Graham. No, it's, all, it's all there. It all comes yeah. from the built-in layers. So uh, really handy stuff, I think. And, and the, there's hundreds of these. I'm just showing you the ones that caught my attention. Yeah. Um, but any of the information that's in here, you can extract. There are ways of extracting it to a spreadsheet or to uh, um, other maps or whatever. They're all built into the system. Um, it's a multi-user system. So you can have as many as you know, your parish or all of your parish councillors on here and you yeah. can give them read-only accounts so they can't do any damage. But the ones that you think are a bit more computer literate, you can actually share your workload by getting them to go out and do the work. Yeah. The one I really like is called geolocation. And that's where you can actually run Parish Online on your smartphone. Right. And so you're creating your asset register and you know you've got 25 grit bins scattered around the village, but you've got no idea where, you, where they are. What you do is you go along to the primary school and say, when you take the kids out, can you please have them photograph all the grit bins? Mm -hmm. And they get uploaded automatically because Parish Online's on their phone into the correct place. And all of a sudden, you've suddenly got 25 pictures of grit bins. You've also got 25 pictures of bus stops because children get confused between a grip bin and a bus <laughs> stop. But that's just part of the fun, you know? Um, oh. So, but th that's what we do. It's just, you're trying to share the workload amongst others. We have a footpath committee, for instance. So they take over the business of looking at all the footpaths and working out which styles need refurbishing and that sort of thing. So if I go into a parish lair and I go to a footpath features, and uh, change, let me turn off the listed buildings because that gets a bit confusing. Where are they there? So if I go so, up- Graham, to... I've got two parishes that border each other. Uh, one yep. of my parishes has signed up for it. I could show my other parish some of their information to try and whet their appetite. Could I? Oh yes, absolutely. Well, I'm, I, I'm very happy in my role as sort of a champion of Parish Online to make a presentation for five or 10 minutes to a parish council meeting, if you like, if that's helpful. Yeah, uh, yeah. I've done it lots of times, actually, particularly to Norfolk and Suffolk, funnily enough. They seem okay. to be more prone to do that there. But I'm very happy to, you know, spend a few minutes just zooming over this, if you like. Yeah, thank you. There I'll pass is, it on. If it's any helpful to you, there is a really useful, um, about a minute and 30 second long video that sort of highlights all the best parts of Parish Online, which I think is well worth watching. So where do I find that one then? Well, the simplest way is to go to the Parish Online user group site. So Ooh, I didn't know there was one. That's really tricky because you have to remember it's called Parish Online user group. <laughs> 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 but... What they do is they say, um, where's the videos? How to videos, okay? So what we do is we keep a record there of all the videos. Isn't that interesting? It isn't gonna to work today. Ah. There it goes. 
So introduction to Parish Online is for one minute and 48 seconds. And that's really useful because if you just click on that, I can't remember I've got this set up so you can see it. Are you able to see this at the moment? Yep, yep. Okay, so can you hear the music? No. No, oh, I didn't. No. But what it is yes, basically... I can. Okay, so this is just a very quick resume of what I've been telling you. Oh, so that would be good to show them that then, wouldn't it? Using yeah. Parish Online will help you map out what you're responsible for and improve public services. So I'll, I'll just... Um, things like creating a permanent record of your asset. So basically, this is the user group website. All sorts of full of useful, helpful things here. It's They're in the email that I send you afterwards with a list of all the things we talked about. Right. So all the links you need are going to be there. Um, what else have we got and how much time we got? We're running short on time. Let me just see what... Oh, yes. Well, you've already got a copy, you said. So... For, of your one own. of my parishes has, but I've, you know, we've paid for it and we haven't used it. It's just one of those things that we said we were going to do and then we haven't actually. Right. Uh, we've so, had the annual accounts and stuff. I haven't had time to tinker. So, right. So, if you if you want, um, there are training sessions that I run, which I think get mentioned in the newsletter. Do you get the newsletter each month? Mm, no, no, I don't. Don't. don't think so. Well, I'll, I'll put that into the email as yes, well. Please do. Please but, do. But basically, where are we? So that's here. And what we do is these are the sessions that are upcoming. Now, I'm taking the rest of May off because we're moving house. But basically, there's basics 101 all the way through to 107. And then what you're looking at now is the demo. And there's also the banter sessions, which are just wonderful. If you really want to have fun, Didier, um, yeah. Come along every Friday afternoon between three and four. There's right. a group of what I call the usual suspects, and they're just yeah. um, parish councillors and parish clerks who are all very familiar with parish online, and they want yeah. to help um, people who get stuck or have questions. And so they're there for an hour every Friday, just expecting people to drop in, saying, "How the hell do I do this?" They show oh, you. Okay. Oh, that's Thank a good resource as well. Then. Go. Yeah, it's very useful. Um, and then what we, it's called a banter session because when there's nobody asking questions, they just go ahead and chat about whatever is of interest. And of course, yeah. most of this stuff is of interest to every parish council across the country because we've all got exactly the same issues. Yeah, haven't we, Dust? Yeah. And, uh, and so there'll be this well, recently, of course, we spent most of last Friday chatting about the, the council elections and the outcome. And we were just <laughs> so enchanted that we sent a very rude message to Boris Johnson, basically saying get stuffed we've gone lib dem <laughs> which was really well, I'm, I'm having my arguments with boris johnson and my local mp at the moment as well because my ukrainian family have been waiting for over five weeks for their visa and there's lots <sighs> of families that are now getting approved within one week and i think they've lost our data well they are extraordinary we had a parish sorry at our last parish council meeting a lady came who said i'm sponsoring um you know i'm looking after the families who are sponsoring people here from ukraine there are 25 yeah. families in this area they said one we have first of all as you probably know you've got to fill in 51 pages to get a visa for these people yeah yeah that page yeah, i think it's 54 pages. pages the initial form i've got a degree 54. in english and, I okay. made it on it. and then yeah. they said they said we got one family where they had the mother and two children. Yeah. And the baby was allowed in, but the 14 year old boy was not. So clearly oh. he was a really um, in, a grave threat to the United Kingdom. Oh. And then they had another mother with three children, and there was a three year old that wasn't allowed in. Oh. It's quite extraordinary. Oh, it's, awful. it's so stupid. So. Oh. Um, if we can throw out Boris and we can throw out Pretty Patel and all the rest of the pretenders, we'd be in great shape. <laughs> oh. Oh, it's anyway, neither yeah. here nor there. This is just to show you that you can get training if you need it uh, for every topic you need to do for running a parish online. Um, what else have I not covered that I ought to? Oh, for the one that's next door to you that doesn't have parish online, um, yeah. are you, you're aware, I, I trust, that you can get it for free. It doesn't cost anything. If you So all parishes need to insure themselves. 
And if you insure through an organization called BHIB, which is um, the, the broker for Aviva, right. um, we not only halved our insurance bill, but we also got them, they pay for our parish online. Oh, right, okay. So what they say is that this, it's not um, altruistic. They just find that the parishes which are using the uh, register, the asset register, are so much better organised than those who don't that they save that sort of money on um, defending them against claims or in helping them if they're making a claim. Oh, right. So, and the so policies are competitive as well. Yeah, absolutely. Oh, yes. Yeah. So we wouldn't have done it if um, if it hadn't been for that. But yes, we saved ourselves a ton of money. <laughs> oh, great. They, yeah. there's, a, there's a downside to that, Lydia. They said, you yeah. know, it's, it's very, very important that you have the um, replacement cost accurately listed for things, because nowadays, unless there's life involved, the fire department will not go and save a building like a village hall that's just burning down. They'll let it burn down. So you're going to have to replace oh. the entire thing. They won't attempt oh. to risk and save it. So I said, so how do I know what my village hall is worth? Because it's in the the um, the register at the moment as being worth 600,000. I said, and I can't see how on earth they come up with 600,000. So she sent me a desktop calculator. You know, this little piece of software where you can calculate the value of your village hall. Right. And I was absolutely right. Our value was completely out of value. But it turns oh. out we should have been in, in, insuring it for twice as much, for 1.2 oh, really? million. <laughs> yeah. So that was the downside. But uh, on the other hand, we are now properly protected. So that's a big feeling of relief. Yeah, yeah. Well, that's so, really useful. Thank you. So well, you're very welcome, Lydia. I'm delighted that we got together. Um, so I will send you an email with the video of this in case any of this, unless you don't want it, in which case I'll just dump it. Um, you yeah, know, that'd be useful. Thank okay, you. and I'll send you a, a little document that comes with it that sort of shows you all the things we've been talking about, such as the user group and uh, who's who in Parish Online themselves, who do you talk to, that sort of thing. Lovely, um, thank and you. Then you take it from there. And Brilliant. it gives you the details of the Friday afternoon sessions of the, there's something called the community forum where you can just go in and say, I'm having trouble with this. Is there anyone online who can solve the problem? And usually someone will come up and say, you clown, it's a piece of cake. Hit the other button. <laughs> or whatever it happens to be, you know. Yeah, uh, yeah. Okay. Lovely. That's really so, useful. Thank you. And um, well, thank I'm you for your glad. hospitality as well. <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, I look forward to seeing you at some of the sessions or um, in, in the yeah. banter sessions because I'm involved with those as well. And uh, good luck with Parish Online and with, thank you. with um, convincing your fellow councillors to get on with it. Yes. Lovely. Thank you ever so much for your time, Graham. Thank you. It's a pleasure. Take care, Lydia. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.